This is a full step-by-step -step guide for you to study maths even if you have no mathematical talent. The biggest excuse I hear everywhere is, oh, I'm just not a mathsy person. But what does that even mean? Whether it's GCSE, A-level, or IB maths, all of their curriculums solely rely on the amount of hard work you put in. If you can sit down and put in the grind in a clever way, then I can guarantee that you will be able to get better, faster, and improve your mathematical ability. Most of us will just jump straight into solving equations until we get stuck on something and then we lose motivation. But this is a systematic subject. You won't improve unless you're also systematic with your approach. So instead, start by creating a list of every possible type of question that you can be assessed on. Let's say you're studying trigonometry today and there's 10 types of questions that the examiner can assess you on. Sine and cosine rule, using trig formulae, and solving for trig equations using factorization. Whatever they are, simply write down the name of the type of question and an example of it without the answer. The list of questions you now have for trigonometry will guide you throughout your entire revision process because it serves as a personalized checklist for everything that you can be assessed on. The reason we do this is because the fundamental challenge with a maths question is that you need to learn to look at it and then identify the method that you can use to then solve it. So naturally, the focus of our revision should be based on the types of questions that they can throw at us in the exam, not just general topics. The way I made this list of questions was simply by looking at my IB math subject guide. And I know it sounds like a lot, but you don't have to make this overwhelming list of all the question types of all the topics on day one. Just make them on the day that you study a topic and then it'll build up over time as you do more and more. Now that you have the list of question types, give each one a go. You're studying trigonometry, yeah? Before going and reading the trig chapter, try to solve each one of the question types that you listed above and give them your best shot even if you don't know anything. It'll be difficult to figure out most stuff at this stage, but the point is doing this will help you find out which specific part of the method in each question you don't get or that you struggle with. Is it something simple like not being able to remember cos and sine values? Or is it that you get stuck at a specific part of solving a trig equation? Whatever it is, now you know which part of every single question type in trigonometry that stumps you, that you don't get, that you have to put all your focus in. That's basically half your revision sorted. Practice, practice, practice. That's the only thing I heard back in school. And yeah, doing questions is important, but without understanding the conceptual basis of every problem, you will not be able to tackle unfamiliar questions in exams. The first tip I have is to not ignore the pesky knowledge gaps we all have back in grade 8. You're lying if you don't. It's the mass topics you never really understood and never bothered to learn again. My foundational gap was log equations and I literally left them till the end of my final IB exams and I wish someone had just sat me down and told me to spend two hours relearning what logs are. It's simple. Because as soon as I stopped overlooking the basic stuff that I didn't know, I was able to solve the more complex, difficult stuff a lot faster, understand it better, and then my grades just started to improve. The easy solution to this is to not do it yourself, but to go to a teacher after school and literally just sit with them and go like, you know what, I don't know logs. I had to do it, it was embarrassing, but we can't overlook this sort of stuff, it is very important. When you get something wrong in math class, you end up feeling deflated, you don't wanna really work on it anymore, and then you feed into the BS narrative of, oh, I'm not a mathy person. But the problem isn't you. Sometimes the explanations we get just aren't compatible with the way we learn. So. Just get a better teacher. What I actually mean is find a better way to teach yourself the concept. The people sitting next to you who have just learned what you don't understand will be able to teach it to you a lot better with like a lot more relatableness. Most of the time talking to someone does help, but I never really understood something unless I watched a tutorial by Patrick JMT, Exam Solutions, Khan Academy, this sort of stuff that explains concepts in easy, digestible 5-10 minute videos. As helpful as that is, there is a downside to just going on YouTube and hitting the search button. Not all of the videos will provide us A-level or IB specific content. It may be more basic or more advanced, so don't waste time with trying to experiment with different videos. Focus on your syllabus. If you're doing IB maths, then use ibmathsresources.com. They compiled all the videos from Patrick JMT and exam solutions that correlate with the applications and for uh, analysis SL and HL. You can use their list of videos to make your question types list because they have covered pretty much every single question type for every big topic in our syllabus. As mentioned, practicing questions is obviously imperative to you getting sevens or A stars in maths. Now that you've seen some examples and you've understood some of the concepts, you can now do topical questions from past papers and question banks. What I did was I used to target one specific topic and then do all the question types underneath that topic. It's simple. The first big benefit of doing topical questions is that you get to see all the recurring questions that come up in every other year's exams. By familiarizing yourself with those popular and easy questions, you can work on them and then secure those easy PC marks. Second, you'll be able to continually work on 
on and improve each of the question types the way you approach it because you'll get to see that question type with different numbers, different wordings, and you'll be able to really focus on which part of the method you get stumped and what you need to work on even more. For every important maths exam, spread your work out for at least over four weeks. This isn't the stuff that you can wrote, learn, and memorize the night before the exam like you can for theory subjects. Maths is a skill that you need to build. I know a lot of the people aim for those 100% practice maths for one or two hours every single day. If you can do that, great. But what I would recommend as a minimum is to dedicate a set amount of time that you do maths every single week. That way you have a bit more flexibility over which days you do more maths and less maths and that you you don't need to do something every day. It requires a bit a bit less discipline. I'd say around seven to 10 hours of maths every week, especially on the weeks leading up to the exam, that is quite essential. The second tip I have is to space out the days that you attempt a topic. If you work on trigonometry today, then don't do trig questions for another three days. Then don't do it for another 10 days after that. Then don't do it a month after that. Allow yourself to forget the method and try newer, harder questions so that you're forcing yourself to actively figure out the process to get to the solution rather than just memorizing a set method for that question type. It won't work every time. Documenting the mistakes you make is crucial for your progression. My suggestion is to keep using the question types list you made at the start. Put it on a spreadsheet or a paper, anything you want, but my suggestion is that every single time you practice that question type, you color code it green, orange, or red, or you keep a tally of the questions that you got wrong at least. What I also did was that I used the mark scheme to find patterns in the method that they will be giving you marks for. If trig graphing questions are common, then I look at the mark scheme and look at their method to see what part of my working out will the examiner actually give me marks for if the question is hard. It is a step up to put in the time to do this when you have to study anyways, but if you want the 100%, the 7th day stars, then you have to. Benefit number one is that you're now able to see exactly what your weak topics are. You can focus on them during your revision and you can stop doing this thing where you go through everything. Focus on the stuff that you don't know first. Big benefit too is that you've now accounted for every single question type that the examiner can assess you on. That to me is the smart way to go about your revision, cover all your bases. And the final benefit is that keeping track of your mistakes like this is actually quite simple. You just have to modify the color of a question or make a note if you make a mistake, it takes 10 seconds. I had a Google sheet with all the trends and common patterns I found in my math exams and I kept track of my mistakes in there as well. Do make your own though, you have to have a list of the question types anyways, have them in column one. Have the second column be the exact parts of the questions that you struggle with and the last parts be the common trends that you see in the exams. There's three tips I have when you don't understand a question or you find it very difficult to solve. Identify and isolate each concept of the problem. Maths builds upon itself. Complex concepts are built upon by the simple ones. Most questions in our papers require multiple components to get to the right answer. So identify these components and split them up into multiple problems that isolate just one operation. Now review and practice solving each one of the components individually. Only devote your time to solving all the parts of the equations together once you've mastered them individually. Number two, work with a problem that uses smaller numbers and no decimal points. Using bigger numbers with decimal points confuses and distracts you from understanding the actual concept that you need to practice for the exam. So if you're stuck, choose whole numbers that you can solve in your head. This would allow you to solely focus on the concept that you don't understand. Third, reverse engineer the step-by-step -step solution on Symbol Lab. Only review the solution after you've attempted to thoroughly practice and understand the problem. Expending mental effort is the most effective way to improve your understanding of the topic. Please internalize this. But that being said, once you absolutely need to look at the solution, A, use the mark schemes to find patterns for the types of things that the IP will give you marks for. And also B, go on symbollab.com, type out the problem, and you'll get a much more detailed step-by-step -step solution. This logical method and this advice is something I really wish I had back in the IP. You obviously don't need to follow it to a T, but experiment and study in a way that gives you holistic understanding and make sure you cover all your bases. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this has helped and I'll see you next time.